peaceful evening, Oliver was shunting ballast trucks in the yards at Augsburg, feeling at peace with himself. He had had a good day, and was looking forward to topping it up with some leisurely shunting, as well as a chat with the small railway engine. As he pushed the trucks into a siding, he heard a voice call out to him. Say hey, Oliver, what are those things? Oliver recognised the voice as coming from Rex. He looked over to see him near the ballast chute. What things? He asked. Like a tree, on that siding. Curious, Oliver was uncoupled and puffed over to Rex to see what he was referring to. The siding in question was behind some bushes, and on it was a set of very strange objects. From a distance, Oliver couldn't quite make out what he saw on the siding. They looked like a line of large, dirty trucks. Naturally, Oliver's driver moved him across the yard so they could get a better look. When they stopped next to the siding, they stared in surprise. The objects weren't trucks. Instead, they were six old, rusty tenders. Blimey! exclaimed Oliver. Where did you use some from? I have no idea, replied the driver. We'll definitely tell the track controller about this tomorrow. Perhaps he'll find some use for them. The next day came, and the track controller arrived to examine the tender, along with some workmen. Oliver watched closely, and was a little confused. Not sure what he did use for those things, he thought. Eventually, the fat controller turned and walked up to Oliver. A very fascinating find, Oliver, he said. It's clear these tenders have seen better days, but I think I know what to do with them. I'll have Henry take them to the works. And so it was arranged. Soon the tenders were coupled to Henry's goods train, and he puffed along the main line, unhappy with the extra embarrassing wind. It turned out the tenders were the same ones Duck once used to play a trick on him when he felt he deserved a second tender. Everyone he passed made some sort of remark about washouts or Blind Scotsman's first visit to Sodor. Henry felt a strong sense of relief when he finally arrived at the work. The tenders were uncovered from the train and he pushed them into a siding. Duck was also there and had just been repainted. He looked cheekily over at Henry as he pulled in next to him. Hello, Henry, he grinned. I see you finally took a liking to those tenders. Don't you start too, Duck, groaned Henry. And for your information, I'm not keeping them. The fat controller is going to start using these as replacement tenders for when our regular ones need to be mended. Duck fell silent and made a frown. Henry noticed this immediately. What? Oh, never mind. It's just some myth I heard from the diesel I got these from. Henry was confused. What diesel? A few days after I came to Sodor, I pulled a goods train to the station on the mainland. There, I offered to take those tenders from a diesel's goods train. But he warned me that they were, well, allegedly haunted. Henry stared at Duck. Then, he started to laugh, and soon, Duck did too. <laughs> you don't really believe that. <laughs> Do you? said Henry, catching his breath. No, as I said, it's only a myth. But as Henry left to continue his goods run, the western engine looked back at the tender with a look of concern. Well, I hope it is, for all our sakes. A few days passed, and the tenders were all cleaned, refurbished, and repainted in various northwestern colours. They were now ready for a new engine to clean them. Not long afterwards, James had to get a leak in his tender patch, and he was coupled up to one of the new tenders. James hated the one he was given. While it was thankfully his colour, it was only slightly smaller than Gorm and dwarfed him. It makes me look like a 
my turtle carrying our rhinoceros on its back. He complained to the others that evening. I hear that's what Thomas said when he saw it. Chuckle thought. Ha! I only wish you was wrong. Uh, never mind, James. Soothed Henry. It's only temporary. <laughs> James sighed and went grumbly to sleep. The next morning, the fat controller came to speak to his engines. A train of supplies for workmen will be heading to Normandy, so the branch line there can have another set of tracks put in, he informed everyone. I will need an engine to take the trucks and the workmen's coach. Do I have a volunteer? May I do it, sir? Pete James excitedly. There was a long, awkward silence. No one knew what to say. Everyone who knew James knew how much he despised filling trucks. So it would take a dream situation for him to be so willing to pull them, even though he didn't have to. Even the fat controller couldn't believe it, but he tried to compose himself. Uh, yes, uh, of course, James, he said at last. Thank you, whistled James, and he puffed cheerfully out of the shed, leaving a set of baffled engines behind. That's simply not like him, Henry said to Gordon. Was he so quick to agree? I don't know. Maybe he took on some contaminated coal, grunted Gordon. Unbeknownst to them, Duck had been listening from a siding. Oh dear, maybe the story is true. During the next few days, James seemed more and more unfazed by goods traffic, or even getting his paint dirty. While the Avengers agreed this was a much needed change for the better, the fact it was so sudden was undeniably unusual. A few days later, Donald and Douglas also had to have their tenders checked on, and they were both given different tenders. Donald's was larger than him, like James's was, and Douglas's was smaller. Oh, not you too, said Henry when he saw them. The engines found it a great joke, but none of them realized that that was going to change very quickly. The next morning, Henry awoke to find Donald seething with anger while his driver tried to start him up. What's wrong? He called out. I have the ball of good train. Donald exclaimed. Rubbish, Donald, replied his driver firmly. You're a good engine. Now come on. Donald scowled at his driver, but reluctantly went off, leaving Henry very confused. Uh, uh, first James, and now Donald. What, what's, what's this going on? All throughout the day, Donald was very violent and abusive to the truck, even when they behaved. As for Douglas, he was different too, as Henry found out later that day at Tiffler. What is that? asked Douglas in alarm, as he heard some trucks bumping into each other. Dirty car, calm down, Douglas, puffed Henry. It's only Dirk. Uh, Douglas, do you know why Donald and James are acting so strange lately? And for that matter, what's up with you? I didn't think an engine shunting would alarm you like that. Sorry about that. I'm always been nervous, said Douglas simply. I'm just not used to noises as loud as those rooms that being bumped together. Henry was baffled, but before he could question Douglas further, the Scottish engine had to leave with another goods train. As he left, Henry watched on, unsure what to think. James's sudden change was at least a positive one, but as for the Scottish twins, they felt like completely different engines, and not in a good way. Henry then saw Duck at the far end of the yard, puffing away, and he couldn't help but notice a worried look on the other engine's face. Henry thought back to when he first brought the tenders to the works, and how Duck reacted. He then remembered what he said about them, and where he got them from. 
wonder who might be hiding something. Henry never got the chance to question Duck, and by the time night came, he was exhausted. He decided to leave it until tomorrow. He backed into the shed next to Gordon. James and the twins were also there, already fast asleep. Henry soon followed. It had begun to rain outside, and the sound was very soothing to the green engine. He definitely needed it. Henry and Gordon awoke in shock. The voice that just yelled was unmistakable. James? Gordon said. What's the matter with you? James didn't respond. He just kept rambling in anger. Get out of me! He demanded, as if to no one in particular. James? Called Henry, but before he could say any more, Donald and Douglas woke up as well, and like James, began to shout and scream. It sounded like they were possessed. Let me be! Are you in my snowball? The once peaceful rain began to strengthen, and they could all hear thunder above them. Suddenly, there were multiple flashes of lightning lighting up the entire shed. In those brief moments, the answers to Henry and Paul's questions were revealed. In the flashes, they didn't see James and the twins. Instead, they could see three unfamiliar angels in their places. It was hard to get a good look at them, but when seeing them next to their tenders, they looked as if they were built to match. Then, the lightning stopped, and in the darkness, the two beginners could see that James, Donald, and Douglas were back in their places. They had also stopped screaming, and had gone deathly silent. Gordon and Henry had never been a greater shock. <laughs> How? The tenders, whispered Henry shakily. They, they must have taken control of them somehow. But that's us. Like, well, that makes no sense, Henry. How can tenders be capable of something like... like that? Henry didn't know how to respond at first. Gordon did have a point. Then, it came to him. That's it. Tomorrow, I get to the bottom of this. And I know where to start. Get some sleep, Gordon. No, I'll explain in the morning. The next morning, Duck was asleep and alone in his shed. Oliver was already out of his first passenger train, and Duck's first train wasn't due for another two hours. Just then, he awoke to a familiar whistle. That's odd, he thought. What's Henry doing out here? Henry stopped outside the shed, and out of his cab stepped the fat controller. Morning, Duck, he said. We'd like to talk with you. Oh, yes, sir, replied Duck nervously. What, what is it? We want to know where you got those tenders, said Henry calmly. Duck, don't. What happened? James and the twins have acted strangely ever since they were given those tenders, explained the fat controller. Henry told me that last night, they were acting as if possessed by demons. Oh my! Are they okay? Henry looked down at his buffer. Well, they, they did eventually return to their normal selves, but they were deluded. They didn't seem to understand what just happened to them. They're still in the shed, but they've been uncoupled from the tenders, just to be safe. Now, Duck, continued the fat controller, I understand these tenders were the same ones you once used to trick Henry many years ago, and that you yourself were the one to bring them onto the island from a diesel on the other railway. I want to know, what did this diesel say about them? Duck sighed. <sighs> I didn't believe the stories at first, 
I thought they were silly good stories, but I realised I might have been wrong. The Fat Controller and Henry waited patiently for Duck to continue. According to the Diesel, those tenders belonged to six engines in the eastern region. These engines had, well, rather extreme accidents during the 1950s. They were damaged beyond repair and were naturally scrapped. Sometimes, tenders of scrapped engines are reused for others' purposes. They could act as spares or snow plows or to be used to store things like boiler sludge. These six tenders, however, were, well, different. The fat controller frowned. How so? Well, based on the story, strange things happened in the yards those tenders were in. Workmen sometimes claimed they would see engines coupled up to them during their night shifts, but that couldn't be proven. That wasn't all, however. Some engines, when passing through the yards, said they could hear whistles and voices when there was no one around but them and their crews. These strange events carried on for quite some time, but what put an end to it was when a tank engine was asked to move one of the tenders from its siding to another. As it did so, however, it suddenly tipped over. No one knew why or how. The engine was in good working order, and so was the track. Eventually, the strange behaviour surrounding the tenders was given more attention. The very diesel who collected them was the one I met at the station on the mainland, and he told me everything. I see, said the fat controller grimly. But why did you bring those tenders here? I didn't think much of the diesel story. I offered to take them off him to lighten his load, and he was thankful. I... I... I just simply wanted to help. I'm... I'm very sorry, sir. The fat controller stayed silent. He thought about all he had heard. Henry, however, felt very cross. You, you, you should have known better, Duck. Even if it wasn't true, you still shouldn't have obtained them without telling the fat controller. You just... You're lucky it was just James and the twins that were affected. That will do, Henry, interrupted the fat controller. Duck, what has happened as of late was not your fault. Indeed, you should have informed me about these tenders before bringing them onto the island. But... It would be very unfair to blame you. Thank you for telling me everything. I know what to do. He turned to Henry. Henry, please collect all the tenders and take them to the scrapyard. Of course, sir, replied Henry. As soon as the fat controller boarded his cab, Henry puffed slowly away, leaving Duck in the shed, alone and silent. He didn't blame Henry for what he had said. He had every right to be cross. He only hoped, though, that he would be forgiven soon. It took some time, but eventually, Henry's train for the scrapyard was ready. A single truck was placed between the tenders and his own, just to be safe. He sat in the yard, waiting to go. He looked over the sheds. James and the twins had been given back their original tenders and were still in the process of recovering. How are you feeling? I was just trying to explain everything to them, Gordon said. And I honestly can't believe a single bit, huffed James. I actually liked pulling trucks. <laughs> Indeed you did. <laughs> it was honestly a nice change. And a, and a scary one. Still, it's um, it is good to see you back to how you really are. Just then, Henry Scott blew his whistle, and the green engine steamed away. It was a long, silent journey. Henry was lost in his thoughts about the tenders, about their story, and most importantly how they affected his friends. When he arrived at the scrapyard, he found the fat controller talking to some workmen. Ah, Henry, glad you got them here safely. 
I was just explaining the situation. They will get to work straight away. That's uh, good to, to hear that, sir, replied Henry quietly. The flight controller looked up at the green engine, taking note of his very downcast look. About earlier, he said slowly, I know you're upset, but you must know it really isn't Doug's fault. It was understandably a hard story to believe, and Doug would never want to harm anyone. Henry gave a long sigh. I... I know, sir, it's just... Seeing your friends suddenly become... something they're not. The more I think about it, the more I realise how scary it is. The fat controller nodded. They both watched as the scrapper set to work, taking the fenders apart, piece by piece, until eventually they were no more.